Well, Gary, and a confusing one for really everyone involved, trying to figure out exactly what happened and how. First grader Nishan Sidney says she likes going to school here at Madison Elementary, and her grandmother tells us until this happened, she liked sending her, expecting her to be safe. She says she doesn't believe that's the case anymore, and administrators have not been able to change her mind. I was just blown away with it. Blown away, Doreen Drawn says that something like this could happen at school. And upset. She says her granddaughter was stabbed with a hypodermic needle by a first grade classmate. I said, what is inside your hand? He showed me and then he said, show me your thumb. And she hold out her thumb and that's when he stabbed her. It hurt it. But this Davenport grandmother says what happened next was even harder to take. Sitting down with the head nurse. I was told that it looks clean, that's what she said. And the principal. He said, well, Doreen, there's nothing else I can do about it. You know, um, we don't know where the needle come from. District representatives say the student found the needle on his walk to school and told them he only pretended to poke three kids. The incident report filled out that day says it's possible the first grader was stuck. Two weeks later, you can't see any marks, but Nishan Sidney says it happened. And I got stuck by the needle. No one disputes there was a syringe at school. No one from the district was available to talk with us on camera, but reps say they take this extremely seriously, immediately washing the little girl's hands with soap and water, talking to parents and guardians, and suggesting all three students see their doctors. They tell us the needle is now secured in a biohazard bag and locked in a secure location. As of Monday, it had not been tested. No word on why not or how the boy was able to bring it into a classroom. Meantime, oh, you got hepatitis C, meningitis, HIV. Ron says she needs answers. You get the bullying you hear about, you hear about the guns and the knives. And not every day you hear about needles. But we expect to be hearing more in the coming days in Davenport. That's a lot for a seven year old. Elizabeth Goodsit, KWQC TV 6 News. Well, Gary, administrators say this was an isolated incident at Madison, but after we ran the story, we heard from another parent whose son was stabbed the week before with a hypodermic needle near Buchanan Elementary. Police say it happened off school grounds and tell us too often kids see these needles on their routes to school. They can pick them up and bring them to class. And that brings up another set of problems. Problems parents tell us they had no idea even existed. To be honest, my head just went so many different places. Parents picking up their kids from Madison Elementary today say it's hard to believe a student had a syringe in school. I think that's terrible because you don't know, is it for diabetes? Is it, was it from drugs? Uh, what, you know, that is kind of kind of scary. Some say even scarier that they weren't informed right away. This incident report is dated April 8th, but the principal didn't send a letter to parents until the 25th, the day after our story aired. Madison has always been good about communicating with parents. So for them not to let us know that this is a serious matter to me. The district's police liaison officer says administrators also take this seriously, and so does he. I can totally understand the concern and I would be I would be alarmed and as a parent I'd want to be notified that hey this this happened to your child they may have possibly been poked by a needle because I'd want to take all those precautions also because you just don't know. Sergeant Andy Nyrink says there were a lot of unknowns here. The syringe in school, something new for everyone involved. Definitely we have to look at it to put some kind of a, a protocol in place so that in the future if something like this happens that that you know you know we, we, we can handle a little bit better than we did this time. But what that protocol may be remains to be seen. District reps say there is no biohazard policy in place right now and no easy way to find a needle before it gets to a classroom. There's a fine line. He says a metal detector wouldn't pick up a hypodermic and he wouldn't want to go through every child's backpack. And I don't think any of us want to live in a society where you're going to be searched like that every day. As for testing what was in that needle, that doesn't happen unless there's been a crime and the sergeant says that's not what this was. At the same time, policy could change. We need to put something into place so that, you know, if something like this happens again, is there somewhere that we can take this to have it tested to make sure that, you know, what's in it, 
Is, is, there, is there a hazard? Because he says it could happen again. While we didn't find any needles near school, Sergeant Nyrink tells us they are there. It's alarming. I mean, you find discarded needles all the time. I mean, as officers, when we're out there working, you know, we'll find them laying in different places. He says kids will too, and the best thing parents can do is talk to them. If you find something like that, it's just as dangerous as a gun. You don't know whatever's in there could kill you or make you very sick. Why he says teaching kids not to pick up needles and to notify an adult if they find any is just as important as the lessons they learn in class. In Davenport, Elizabeth Goodsit, KWQC-TV6 News.